Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Normally I would say welcome back to our vegetable garden, but obviously I'm not in the garden. It's right through there. But I've been promising you a little tour of the rest of our garden, our main landscape, and I thought I would do that today. Now we have been working on a landscape project, so things don't look as polished as I would like, but we hit a little snag and so there's going to be a little bit of a delay and that means that either I wait a few weeks to do it or do it now. You're all gardeners. You've seen works in progress, right? So I think you can handle it. Now there are a couple of things that I wanted to clarify before we get started. The first is that we have a storm brewing <laughs> and it's lightly sprinkling on me. I can handle that and it's cooler today, which is great, but we might have an electrical storm. And so I may have to finish this tomorrow and that's okay. The other thing I wanted to mention is sort of the background of how this landscape came about. My husband Bill and I live in Spokane, Washington, which is about 300 miles east of Seattle. We purchased five acres. There was nothing on it except one pine tree about this tall. That was it. We had our house built about 30 years ago. And at that time, we hired a company to put in a sprinkler system, both in the front and the back, and to get a lawn going for us also in the front and the back. Well, here in the backyard, every single year the lawn would look great for about a month and then it would die. It didn't matter how much water we gave it, fertilizer, aerating the lawn, etc. It always died. And I thought, okay, this is stupid. First of all, I'm somewhat anti-lawns because they're basically pollinator deserts. They require so many inputs as far as fertilizers and water and so on. And so I don't really feel the need to have a lawn in our backyard, especially. So we decided to rip out the whole lawn and then to put in some landscape beds. And so that's how this landscape has come about. I am very pleased with it. I really enjoy it a lot. It's not super formal and fancy, but the things that I've planted over the years are the things that I love. I guess I should also explain why I think the lawn died back here every year. And it all comes down to our full basement because they brought in a lot of heavy equipment to excavate it out. So of course there's all that compaction of the soil from the heavy equipment. They probably took all the soil that was in the area of our basement and put it where the lawn eventually was. So I think between the two, the lawn just didn't have a chance to grow well. Now just to give you a little bit of perspective, you can see the vegetable garden off in the distance there and then some large landscape beds right outside the vegetable garden. And I'm looking down from my office window and you can see a whole bunch of clematis vines blooming. There's also my part of my rose garden on the right. And then if I just kind of go down this way, <laughs> I've got the rest of the rose garden and a few interesting plants that we'll look at from the ground level. The project we've been working on that we had to stop for a couple of weeks is to put steel edging around the perimeter of the various beds in our landscape. We do have steel edging around the beds in front and it really has made a nice difference on the appearance of it. And also the funny thing that's happened is as we've been installing the edging, a few of the beds have gotten a little larger. Isn't that a lovely problem? <laughs> the good news is that we do have all of the steel edging in place, but what we have left to do is, first of all, Bill has a few sprinkler adjustments to make due to some beds being a little bit larger than they were before. 
and also the bark that's been in these paths for ages has really broken down which makes it very easy for weeds etc to start in and so we're going to scrape that out utilize it in another area of the landscape and put down fresh bark so that is one of the big holdups right now it's probably a little hard to see but there is a small 50 gallon pond right here mostly for the birds to drink from and I've got a couple of little floating boards in there just in case a baby bird falls in. I'm hoping it'll be able to get back out again. At the back of what we call the immediate backyard, we've got an azalea, bee balm, daylilies, hardy geraniums, bush clematis, delphiniums, and various shrubs. And what borders this area are some crab apple trees. They provide fruits for some of the different types of birds that come to our yard. There's nesting areas for them, places for them to hide if there is a predator of some sort, and they have beautiful blooms in the spring. Here's another view of the backyard. And I have just had so much fun choosing plants. Sometimes they're a mistake, <laughs> and a lot of times they are just wonderful plants that I'm very happy to have as part of our landscape. Sometimes it's a matter of trial and error. We have two island beds, and the one that you're looking at right now is what we call the large island bed. And it is a mix of native shrubs, so things like snowberries, button bush, honeysuckle, American cranberry bush, and yellow currants. And then of course I have a lot of different types of flowering perennials to attract pollinators. And you can see one of my favorite ornamental grasses on the right, which is northern sea oats. Here's a bit more of the large island bed. And I've got gaps in there for more plants. Now we're looking at the smaller island bed and the anchoring tree is a hawthorn that was beat up badly in the winter. We had such a tough winter and it lost a lot of big branches. Very frustrating. But the rest of the bed is mostly bee balm, perennial sunflowers, a rose, and some sedums. We had a bit of a frustrating experience with this end of the backyard because where you see that trellis, we used to have a huge alpine fir tree. And it was doing really great, and then one year it decided it wanted to die. <laughs> so unfortunately, we have the shop behind there, which I really want to block a view of. So we put up the trellis, we planted some different things in the bed, including an Eden rose, which I am crazy about. It's a beautiful pale pink climbing rose and it was covering most of the trellis, and so it was making the shop much less visible. And again, we had this really tough winter, and it died. Oh, I'm so frustrated. So I'm kind of starting over, and I really haven't figured out exactly what I want to put in this corner. For the time being, I have sort of a little triangular area that has annuals in it. I'll show you those in a moment. And it's bordered by daylilies, bee balm, natia, a snowball viburnum, and so on. Now just to point out a few things, I have a lot of salpiglossus plants that I started from seed. The common name is painted tongue, and I think that the flowers are absolutely a work of art. They are just so beautiful. This is the Superbissima blend, so I have all different colors in it. There's a pretty sort of a coral one. 
And then these white flowers are Sissinghurst white poppies. And I've got those here and there. I've got some zinnias that I started from seed. There's some asters that haven't started blooming yet, but they're going to be an apricot color. I've also got Apricotta Cosmos in here, Love in a Mist in the background. You probably can't see all these things I'm looking at, but anyway, it, it is very pretty. It's just that I really need to focus on what I want this area to look like and plant it accordingly. For now, I'm enjoying the annuals. Now, if you're wondering what this big white beast is, <laughs> That is our blueberry patch. And a few years ago, I sewed together a bunch of pieces of floating row cover, and it is to keep the birds away from the berries. Now, the cover is a little bit worse for wear because it's been a few years, but it works amazingly well at keeping the birds out. And we always wait until the flowers have been pollinated and the berries are forming before we cover the section. There's also strawberries in there. Now we have a small patio where I've got an elevated raised bed on the left that has herbs in it. And then you can see where I have the green stock vertical garden. And yes, those are ripe cherry tomatoes on there. Yahoo! And then of course we have a wonderful deck that we had built a few years ago and what a great place to have dinner or breakfast or lunch on a nice day. This is the other side of the small island bed because I wanted to point out the perennial sunflowers or helianthus right here. These are Astrantia or Masterwort. And then I've got bee balms in the back. And oh, I just love all of these plants. They're perennials. They come back year after year. And it's awesome. On the other side of the deck, I have sort of a mixed bed here. I like to call it my rose garden, but boy, do I have a lot of other wonderful things in here. So on the very left, that is a type of hydrangea called mini mauvet. I have an Agatha Christie rose up on the trellis. This red flowering shrub is Calicanthus aphrodite sweet shrub. I cannot recommend that enough. The flowers are amazing. It's hardy enough for our climate. And it really makes an amazing addition to the landscape. And then, of course, there are roses over here, bee balm, and a host of other things. Boy, it's getting pretty stormy, but I did want to point out that there are a lot of poppies blooming in the different beds because I planted a whole bunch of them late in the winter. I just scattered the seeds and they've been coming up everywhere. They're so beautiful. This is the area we were looking at from my office window. And I have more roses in this spot. I've also got a vanilla strawberry hydrangea, which is the flowering shrub in the background. Now, just north of our vegetable garden, we have what we call the water garden room. And it's mostly filled with all kinds of native shrubs and some perennials. But of course, the water feature is the best part of all. This is a pond that we created probably 20 years ago. And we dug the hole ourselves. We do not have much in the way of rocks in the soil. So we're lucky in that regard. And it is just such a peaceful, beautiful place. We tried to make it look as natural as possible. Of course, the birds love to come and bathe and drink here. So that's cool. And I love the water lilies, which are just blooming now. A few videos back, I showed you our big front flower bed and the pollinator garden. I also wanted to point out the state of our lawn. As I've said in the past, I really don't like to put a lot of resources into it. We are very mindful about the amount of water that we use. We purposely put Dutch white clover in the lawn for pollinators. We have dandelions, so it's not a pristine estate lawn by any stretch. 
but it does provide a bit of a green area to rest the eyes. I also should point out that we've been having some very hot weather and that's why the lawn also looks a little bit on the dry side. So our front flower bed probably looks a little bit different from when you saw it last. The Gloriosa daisies, which are all those golden daisies, are blooming their little hearts out. Of course, pollinators love them. I love them. I do cut a few for bringing indoors. And the bee balm, all of this purple stuff, is fabulous as well. And look at the bumblebees. I also wanted to point out this ruby spider daylily. Isn't that flower amazing? At this end of the bed, you can see the poppies in the foreground that I've been growing called Danish flag. And they are about finished blooming for the season, but you'd better believe I'm hanging on to those seed heads so that I have plenty more seeds to plant some for next year. Other things that are notable is the orange flowers directly behind the poppies are a type of Asclepius or butterfly weed. There's more bee balm, Shasta daisies, Flocks. Yes, there's some morning glory in there. I know people have a love-hate relationship with them. I just keep them in check in one area of the landscape, so it works out just fine. Now you're looking at the pollinator garden, and I realize that both flower beds are pollinator gardens technically, but this is the one that we planted specifically to attract pollinators. So you're seeing a whole bunch of Gloriosa daisies. There's also a purple bee balm in there. There are a ton of Shasta daisies that have been spreading over the last couple of years. And in previous videos, I explained that I'm trying to have a somewhat hands-off approach. But when I see something that's getting a little carried away, I might need to control it. On the right-hand side, this side of those Shasta daisies, you see some tall plants that just have leaves so far, and that is the Maximilian sunflower. Those are pretty cool. Another plant that I suddenly seem to have a whole lot of is goldenrod. And again, I'm trying to just let things do what they do and let them attract the different kinds of beneficial insects and pollinators, but it's getting a little carried away too, so I might want to rein it in just a bit. Boy, it's really getting blustery out here. I did want to point out in the background is our small orchard. I think we have about 18 fruit trees. So we've got plums, pears, peaches, apples, and cherries. Everything is grown organically and we've learned a lot of things over the years so that we can get as much pristine produce as possible from them. And last but not least is our lavender patch. If you read my recent garden column, you know that I reported how they did very poorly from our tough winter. And we also discovered that lavender plants typically look good for about 15 years and then you need to start replacing them. So we're in the process of trying to propagate new plants for this area. And of course, there are 300 plants here, so it's no small undertaking. It will be a slow process. Fortunately, the plants are blooming their little hearts out. Our neighbors are tickled with them. So, phew, we bought another year. <laughs> Well, that's the end of our ornamental garden tour. Now you know what I'm up to when I'm not working in the veggie garden. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. Happy gardening.